Okay, this is a PowerPoint about PowerPoint, so please pay attention, follow along, and if you have PowerPoint on your computer, open it up and play around with it. Um, as we're doing this, maybe pause the video every so often. So, we have the PowerPoint logo. Um, when you click on, you'll have the PowerPoint on your desktop. Most probably, you'll double-click it. It might be um, underneath... Uh, this icon here, you probably might be able to access it if it's not on your desktop. But once you open it up, you have some options. You'll have down here a listing of recent PowerPoints that you've opened or maybe that you've pinned or that have been shared with you. You can also search by the name of the PowerPoint if it's not in here. You also have a place, um, and this is all under your file tab, you have a place to open up a blank presentation or you might have other themes, thematic designs for presentations that you might be able to pick. Or you might just click on the open over here and that'll open up a uh, dialog box that has a listing of, of maybe all of the PowerPoints that you have on your computer that have been saved in the same place. Uh, you also have a place to open, start a new PowerPoint to save your PowerPoint to save as, if you have an, an, a PowerPoint that you want to save a second version of it, and you can rename it. You can also print from here and such. Now, once you've opened up, you have a quick access. You'll notice now we're here. Um, we're off of the File tab. We're on the Home tab. And you have a quick access toolbar that has a place for you to save, a little floppy disk, a place to undo, a place to play your presentation, and then to refresh the page itself. You have our ribbon. Yes, there's the ribbon. And the ribbon has all these different tabs, home, insert, design, transitions. Every time you click the tab, you'll get a red line underneath it that lets us know that you're in that tab. And your choices of what you can do change, obviously. You want to make sure that this arrow is pointing up. That means that this tab is completely, this ribbon tab is completely open. If it's facing down, it'll be more up here, and it means that the tab is partially closed, and you can't see everything that that tab can do. So that's on the ribbon with the different tabs. You also have a navigation pane where all of the different slides that you'll be using in your presentation will be listed from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then you have the slide pane, which of course is the pane for whatever slide you've chosen over here. It comes up here, and this is where you can do your editing, adding in text, adding in video, uh, pictures, shapes, what, what have you. Now, I want to add a two-content slide to this presentation. Two-content slide. So how do I do that? Well, on the Home tab, I will click New Slide, and if I click right here on this little downward arrow, it will open up all of these other options. And so then I can click the two content slide here, or I can do the comparison slide, or the title only, or the section header, or a completely blank one if I'm only going to like put pictures in there or something. Whatever that is. But that's how you add a new slide. Now if I want to add X, it's text, sorry, to the title text box, which of course in this one you have a title text box and you have a subtext box. So I click on this one so that I can then add in and all I'm going to do is then type in whatever I want to put right in here. So I'll click this text box and I'll type in what I want into the, into the title box. So maybe I type in Program Enrollments 2021. But now I want to move 2021 from this text box into the subtitle box. Well, how do I do that? Well, I highlight 2021 and then I left click and I drag and drop it in right there easy way. That's how you can move text around. You can just highlight it and drag and drop it. If you highlight text, that allows you to do something to it. So, maybe I want to change the font properties for this text box. So I want to change this, so I'm going to highlight the text. And then, of course, you see right here, under the Home tab, there's a whole section for font. I can change the font style. I can change the font size. I can change the color. I can highlight it if I want. I can bold it, italicize it, underline it. I can strike it out. All kinds of things I can do in here in this font. But I have to highlight it, and then I can do my stuff to it. Wonderful.
Now, if I want to add a theme to the entire presentation, so I don't want this like boring white with you know black words on it theme. Well, there's no theme tab, but there is a design tab. So I click on the design tab, and then I get all of these different designs. I even have design ideas that come up over here. So if I hover over each one of these, it will hopefully change. It will give me the name of the, of the, the preview of the theme, but it also might um, give me a, an overview of what it's going to look like just on this one. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't, depending on the type of PowerPoint you're using. But then, let's say I click on this one because I like it. Boom, all of a sudden it's going to change the theme of all of my um, <clears throat> slides over here. So and if I don't like it, I can just go to undo and then undo it and take it back to normal. Now, if I want to add a photo, I have several different options. So in this, you can see that there are options even in the text box. So if I go here, I can click on that. That's going to allow me to add an insert photo icon. I could also just go to insert and click that tab, and there'll be a little area where I can then insert a picture. And of course, then either one of those, when I click them, it will take me to a dialog box, which will, I can then select a folder that has the picture in it. I select the picture, and then I hit open, and it will put the picture in the box or on the slide. And then I can click the picture, and I can resize it, make it smaller, make it bigger. I can drag and drop it around the whole slide so that I can put it in a different place. Now let's say I have two text boxes on a slide, and I have one that I fill in, but I don't want the other text box. Well, how do I delete it? Well, i got to click the text box so I get these little balls around it. That's the same way where if it looked like this, I could drag it all over the screen. But here, I click it, and then if I right-click, I should get an option to either cut or delete it. Or, since I've clicked it, I can go over here, and I can also hit this icon and cut it. And that will get rid of it. So you can get rid of those extra text boxes that you don't need. Now, if I want to change the view for the presentation, I have some options down here. This is the view we are in right now, right here, because it has slides on the side and then a preview slide of the one that I'm locked on. But let's say I want to use this one where I want to see the slide sorter. I can see all the slides in order. I would click this down here, see it looks the same, and then it's going to give me all of these slides, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Depending on how the size is, I could have like 10 slides all here, and I could see all of them in that little window. Sometimes you have an option for a little book, which will then let you view what that slide is going to look like in a presentation. Sometimes PowerPoint doesn't have that, depending on the version that you have. But this is the one you're generally going to work in, this one right here, with the slides over here and a slide in the middle. So you can also click View tab, and that will give you the option of looking at those different views over here. You can click on the slide sorter or the normal slide view like this. If I want to reorder my slides, let's say slide four is in the wrong place. I put it here, but now I want it up here. All I got to do is select it, click it, and drag it, and drop it up there. And once I've done that, select it, and drag it, and drop it. Or I can select this one, and drag it, and drop it down here. That's how it works. Now, if I want to add a transition to all my slides, which is always fun, you click on transition, boom, and then you have all kinds of options. And you can scroll down to get even more options. But let's say we want to do it, and we're going to click on wipe. So I would click on wipe, and then if I want it to not just be on slide six, but I want it to be on all my slides, I click apply to all. And once I've done, I've done that, boom, then I'll have a nice wipe from right to left on all of my slides as I go from one to the other. Okay, here is an addition to uh, the presentation dealing with the um, use of animations and such on uh, PowerPoint. So let's say I have this uh, animation, I have this, this slide, and I have three different ideas here. I have this idea, 
I have this text box, and I have this text box. And I don't want them to run in the order in which they are in. In fact, I want this one to go first. So I'm going to go to my animations. And you can see that I have my animation pane open. I can close that, and then I can open it so I can see what's going on. But I'm going to click on this one first, and I'm going to add an animation. I'm going to do a fade. And you'll see all of a sudden comes up one. So now I know that that text box can come up first. Now click on this one. I'm going to do a fly in this time, although I probably, I'm going to do a fade. It's got classy. Fade is classy. And now you can see that that's the second one going in. And then I'm going to do my Neil Armstrong as the last one. So that then when I present this, and I'll go down here and, and uh, click on this to run the slideshow from this slide, we can see. So here's a very special quote that I want to share with you. And then I click it and say, your best quote that reflects your approach. It's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Now, we all know who said that, right? That was uh, Orville Redenbacher. No, 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 no. That was, uh, that was, and then someone says Neil Armstrong, and you bring up Neil Armstrong. So then again, uh, that is a way that you can, you know, use animations within your text to bring up, you know, your slides to bring up text, to bring up pictures one at a time, utilizing this and use the pane over here so that you know the order in which they're going and double check with that. If I want to zoom in and out of the slide plane, slide pane, this one right here, usually you have right down here, you have either a number or a slider. If I have the slider, I can move it up to make it bigger, down to make it smaller. Or I can click on the number and it will give me some options like 400%, 100%, 50%. And 50% is about usually what you want to have for this view. And do that. If I want to undo my last action, it's right here. Undo is great if you make a mistake, like you accidentally deleted a text box or you deleted an entire slide. Just hit the undo button and it'll take you back before you did what you did that you did not want to do. All right. Now, presentation etiquette. Make sure that the font is readable. Fancy looking fonts that people can't read, not so effective. Leave lots of blank space. You don't want to have too many words or too many pictures or graphics or videos on your slide. A busy slide is hard to look at. Remember, your slide is basically a starter, and you're going to talk more over top of the slide than the words that are on it, because you're not going to read word for word from the slide. You don't want to do that. So, which is a better slide choice? This or this? Well, of course, it's this one. Easy to read, not so easy to read. Now, this one right here has a lot of good information. Probably too much. This is all you need. Three different ideas, and you can expand them on each one of these and add these details in as you talk. But this is the starter information, the most important information, in each one of these places here. So this is the winner. And then, wow, look, this information here is all the information that's here. This is big and readable. Small, and then it's so busy over here. So we want that one. All right, excellent. Now, if I want to start a slideshow without using the ribbon, I have a couple of options. I can either click up here, this little icon, or I can click down here, this little icon. Both of these are going to start your presentation. Easy ways to do it. All right, without getting in on the ribbon and then click, clicking down and going slideshow and then finding the present button. If I want to save my presentation, using the quick access toolbar. If this option is available, I'll use that. Otherwise, I'm going to hit File. I'll get a drop down, and I'll hit Save or Save As. Pretty easy. Save As means you can change the name of the file, the slideshow, just in case you're doing like slight changes and you want it to be like Cool Slideshow 2, and then you have the old Cool Slideshow 1. But that's how you save. All right, so a couple of other things that you can do uh, on PowerPoint. Uh, of course, you can you can draw, draw add you know drawings to your your PowerPoint. You know you click on the draw uh, tab, and let's say I want to highlight like, and I, I'm not going to highlight uh, words. But maybe I have a picture in there, but I want to highlight part of the picture. So let's say I want to highlight in yellow. So I'm going to click on this. If I go and do the down, I can change the thickness with the down arrow. So I'm going to pick this one right here. 
And then I'm going to come over here and I just want to highlight the the. So I'm going to highlight that. I wouldn't normally be able to highlight it because it's a it's an image. Um, so I can't highlight it like I would words down here, but I could highlight that. Um, I don't want that, so I'm just going to undo it. Uh, and then you'll notice that if I try to do anything else, oh my goodness, I keep getting this. So I'm going to undo that, and I'm going to make sure I go back to my pointer. I click on my pointer, and now I'm good to go again. I could also insert, and I talked about inserting pictures earlier, which you could do, but I could insert a table. So let's say I want to insert a table, and I want to insert a table that has five different blocks to it. So I'm going to put that there, and I'm going to move it down to this point. You notice I can put in you know, uh, a name, and I hit tab, and it moves it over, or I can put in a, a number, and I can hit tab, and I can put in a file, or whatever. I can add words in each one of those. I can highlight those, and go to home, and I can you know, change the font color if I want. I can change the font size if I want. Well, I guess I should, there we go. I can do that. Let's say I want to take my font to 24, boom. I can do that. I can make them a little larger if need be. I can make them a little smaller. So that's I've inserted, and that's the wonderful thing about inserting on here. Text boxes, uh, word art shapes, and icons, and all kinds of things. So you can put arrows in and bring those in. If I want to print my presentation, I'm going to, of course, hit the File tab, which will drop down here, and then I go to Print. And when I hit Print, I have options. Before I print, I can print all my slides, but I can also then do a full page of, for each slide. Or if I click on this arrow, I'll get a drop down that gives me like I can do one slide handout, I can do a two slide handout, I can do three slides per page handout. This is always good to give to people as they're following along to take notes, um, or if they need to, um, you know, you need a cheat sheet for this. Okay, so that is basically how you use PowerPoint. Any questions? Now, once you're done with this, play around with PowerPoint a little bit and then go on and do the North Star assessment for PowerPoint and try to do better than you did last time. All right. Thanks.